The Electricity Act now consolidates all legislations dealing with the electricity supply industry to provide an omnibus and ideal institutional framework to guide the post-privatization phase of the Nigerian electricity supply industry and encourage private sector investments. Now, the primary aim of the bill, as stated in its very first section, is to create a comprehensive legal and institutional framework to guide the Nigerian electricity supply industry, NESI. Uh, joining me right now to discuss further is Wisdom Chab Jumbo, a public affairs analyst. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you, Justin. Nice to join you. All right, first of all, let us just get your general overview concerning this new Electricity Act. Well, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic act. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long time coming. We have been seeking for reforms for the power sector. Uh, for, for the longest of time, uh, since the power sector uh, reform 2005. Uh, uh, so I think this is a long time coming. Uh, it's, a, it's a game changer for the power sector. And um, if you look around the space, you will see that players are really excited about it. Um, it it's about time we decentralize power, uh, I mean, which is what we have been advocating for. This is what this act is doing. So I think generally it's a fantastic act, and I look forward to its uh, implementation. All right. Speaking of um, implementation, just how far do you think uh, this uh, legislation will go in closing the huge electricity supply gap in Nigeria, being Africa's largest economy? I think first of all, what the act is doing is uh, uh, um, that whole conversation we've always had that the grid, national grid, cannot. Um, um, carry the country of 200 million people. Uh, so what this act is doing is it has decentralized power uh, um, in a manner at which now states can generate, uh, transmit, and distribute um, and power I mean, within their states. So in, in this act now empowers states to be able to legislate um, on what happens with the electricity market in their own states. So I think it's, that's a fantastic step and. Um, as we begin to do that, instead of these peculiarities, I mean, uh, what could solve the power problems in Lagos, for example, which is a, uh, um, a mega city, uh, it might be different from what maybe Nasrawa needs and the population, or, or maybe a, a Kogi, for example. So, what the Act is doing is this first step decentralizing power to the states, giving states the, power, the, the, the legislative backing it needs to legislate around power as, as it's deemed fit. Uh, of course, uh, creating his own market, which is really good. And, and lastly, and most importantly, uh, uh, the Act also provides uh, uh, the provisions for other uh, sources like renewable energy. And again, one thing we plan for for the longest of time is uh, what people can give power to the grid. If we generate enough for ourselves, can we give power to the grid? The Act also covers that, uh, uh, that part. So I think with all of this in the mix, um, we, we are sure a uh, way to solve the US power problem. All right, now some people that I spoke with um, say this uh, law has uh, sort of uh, broken the monopoly and will address uh, development and utilization of renewable energy sources. And they say it will also create an enabling environment to attract investments in that particular uh, sector. Do you agree? Well, well, the act, well, what this new act has done, uh, which is which is one thing I like, is um, a, a page of the act was created for renewable energy and energy efficiency. Um, I think that should be part uh, section seventeen or part seventeen um, of the act it talks about renewable energy and energy efficiency. I mean, this act is mandating uh, uh, that there shall be. Uh, the support of development and utilization of renewable energy sources. Now, also, if you read down that particular section, it talks a lot about how that will be done, including investment. So, we want to, we are going to we look forward to see how this is going to work, especially as states are going to um, begin to legislate with guidance from this act um, at the state level. Uh, some real uh, areas, what they need to solve that power problem might just be a mini grid. You know, how that mini grid uh, works together with uh, uh, the distribution companies on ground and how they can be able to collaborate 
to achieve that is something we want to look out for. You know, what is that mix that is going to happen? How do we do that at the state level to solve those um, uh, electrification issues? So, yes, this act is going to drive a lot of investment into the power sector and most especially um, renewables. Uh, if you recall, in the, in the last um, uh, uh, act we had, the reform of 2005, there was really a mention of renewable energy um, at the time. So we have, we have grown now and, and a lot has happened. So yeah, it will drive the investment, that is sure, uh, not just for renewable, but the power sector entirely. Uh, and at least investors can see clearly that the country is prepared uh, for the kind of investment that it needs. Uh, so that whole monopoly of the federal government go this way uh, to power the country. I think this acts as 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 repealed that. So which is good. Investors can kind of put in their money now, mm. and they are sure uh, that uh, there will be progress with the funding they will put in. So yeah, investment will go to come in, and I'm excited about it. Okay, specifically, let's talk about um, the benefits uh, that can be derivable uh, from the renewable energy value chain because it is actually broad. You know, uh, Nigerians are beginning to appreciate um, solar power and all of that, but what other aspects uh, uh, we, we can get this, um, benefits uh, uh, from with this uh, new act? Okay, if I get a question clearly, what are some of the benefits? Um, yeah, we can get from the value chain, yes, yeah, specifically for renewable energy. Mm. Okay. Uh, first of all, when, when you already have um, a lot of emphasis on what renewable energy can do uh, from this act, is the first step of it. Uh, the second step is um, how uh, how will um, uh, the on-grid operators and the off-grid operators collaborate mm -hmm. um, in, in the off-grid areas and the rural areas where, I mean, there are many areas we've never seen, seen power before. Uh, this act also clarifies some of those those issues. Um, there are also uh, aspects of this act that also uh, mentions how um, um, uh, Nigerian content development regulations will also apply um, in this regard to drive local content, um, especially around renewable energy, which is really good. Uh, and also, this act uh, also creates incentives, sort of drive incentives for renewable energy. Um, if you go through the act, if you go down to uh, uh, that same section I mentioned before, um, you will see a part of that section also mentions renewable energy incentives and standards. So this act is also setting standards uh, uh, um, that renewable energy operators we need we need to also comply with, and, and this section is also clarifying the sort of incentives uh, um, that you will get. With, I mean. If you apply renewable energy, and, and most importantly, again, if you, if I may add, um, that uh, this goes now have have that leverage to see how can we put in our mix renewable energy sources like solar, you know, which is really fantastic. So I think uh, we are still studying the act uh, uh, to to look at it uh, more broadly and, and pick pick up on a lot of the gains. But just a, a glance through it and, and see what has been done so far. There are a lot of positivity for the entire value chain um, um, in the renewable energy space, especially with solar, uh, which we already know uh, um, um, has been implemented successfully, is scalable, uh, and all So I, I want to see how other renewable energy sources will come in. Um, for, for example, uh, waste to energy, how we're going to use that in the entire mix. I mean, a lot of us are still studying the act to be sure okay. uh, what clarity it will give in this area. But um, at a glance, like I mentioned before, this is a fantastic act put together. Um, Nigerian power problem, um, uh, for me, I see we are already on our way to solving that problem. Um, the, the, how we work with this, especially at the state level, is what we need to now begin to, to look at. Right. Uh, Lagos, Lagos, Edo, and Kaduna are already uh, uh, leading this, especially Lagos. They already have their policy. Mm. Uh, now they have to see how they begin to implement that. I want to see other states uh, also uh, take take lead from there and begin to decentralize this. Uh, and like you know, according to the Act, um, until states begin to form their electricity markets and have their own policy, NEC um, uh, we continue to act. 
uh, uh, in those spaces until until the states can provide their own um, regulations. All right. But really, just, this is a fantastic act. Um, I keep saying that over and over again. We are clearly on our way to solve Nigeria power problem. I hope implementation will not be an issue. All right, uh, speaking about implementation not being an issue, it's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We we'll still have um, Wisdom Chap Jumbo, public affairs analyst. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk some more concerning how we can harness uh, the issue of um, solar power generation and a whole lot more to expect when Business Insights returns to join us again. All right, let me continue. All right, welcome back. It's the Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Wisdom, many thanks for staying with me. Yeah. All right, now, in 2022, the Rural Electrification Agency officially hit and crossed the 1 million connections milestone through the deployment of standalone solar home system for improved energy access across Nigeria. With this new development now, how do you see uh, the country harnessing up solar power generally? Yeah, um, um, the REA, um, Real Education Agency, they've been doing fantastic work within the space, mm. uh, uh, which is really good. I really must commend them. Um, if you are within this upgrade space, you will know that they are doing so much work. And of course, uh, this Electricity Act we have now, they, they were also very, uh, um, 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 they also contributed their own bits to it. And an entire chapter is also dedicated to them just to break down uh, what um, really would happen with the REA in, in this in this uh, part, which is good. So when we head into it, solar and uh, what the REA can do, there's so much work we need to do around awareness uh, and how solar works. Um, that we need to drive more. And I want to see. I would like to see the REA still be at the forefront of that. How do we continue to create awareness? How do we how would the REA continue to foster relationship between operators in the all grid and on grid space um, for us to work together. I want to see a lot of uh, collaborations and partnerships happen um, uh, um, to see us implement what this act has said. So the, there's still more work for the RA. Uh, I mean the the the, the, the solar Niger, uh, solar Niger project um, that they implemented not too long ago. Um, that was a massive one and they're also electrifying um, universities uh, across the country. So much work is, is being done in the area, and, and, and I want people to visit their website to read more about it. Um, but on this act, for me, I really want to see how they foster a lot of cooperation and partnership within the sector. All right, uh, Wizard, the issue for me right now will be implementation. You have even said that so far it's just about um, three states in the Federation that have actually, you know, joined in this uh, new development as it were. You know, my issue would be that of uh, uh, generation, transmission, and distribution, knowing fully well how uh, capital-intensive, uh, you know, power, you know, supply generally is uh, worldwide. Uh, do you really think uh, the state government um, or some states uh, might not be, be having challenges uh, really uh, getting the most of this? And um, secondly, would you uh, suggest maybe a private-public partnership sort of a, a situation? Of course, you can rule out uh, public-private partnership in this regard. It, it will be one of the fantastic ways to go about it. And um, I mean, I'm glad we have a, a new government uh, administration across the country, uh, which is an opportunity for, for fresh ideas, for people to think innovatively out of the box on how they can solve power problems for their different states. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, at the top of the mind, there are some states you, you will see that can they be able to 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 go on this uh, on their own? Uh, but again, you have to be innovative. Uh, uh, half of the work has been done uh, with this act already for you. You just have to use it to your own. Work with your state assemblies to see how you can drive this. So different states there will be peculiar issues uh, uh, to different states, but the state assemblies should be able to look in more to see how can we leverage. Uh, the private, uh, public private partnership, with private sector people, and see how we can. Some of the states, you just, if government can even support, uh, uh, provide the funding, I mean, the companies are there to do the work. Uh, so, uh, just if I would say, 
mm. for it to work effectively at the state level, there needs to be a lot of innovative thinking, not the way we used to think before. And one good thing this act is, 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 is doing or has done is the fact that you can even infuse um, uh, solar as uh, as part of as part of your your generation. So uh, if you can generate power with solar, how do you put that into your your your, your own grid at the state level? You know, so there are a lot of innovative things that can happen at the state level. And I want to see states uh, no because now we can can hold federal government again, federal government this federal government that they have created that enabling environment by also decentralizing this to take charge. You know, but of course, a few states uh, we we tend to need more of this. But generally, um, I would look forward to every state implementing this. Think out of the box. Mm. You know, it should be business as usual. Right. Think out of how, um, and, uh, for example, a state in the southeast uh, or a state in the south south will be implementing this. Will slightly be different from the states up north. Uh, one of the biggest solar projects. It is in is it Kano or Kaduna that was um, um, uh, inaugurated by uh, former President uh, Buhari before he left? You know, so uh, up north where the, where there is more work we can do with renewable energy and solar, for example, a lot of things will happen differently. We we'll want to see how these um, innovations will come. Out. And very innovative ideas in this space. We uh, want to see them implemented. All right, we look forward to uh, seeing now the wonderful things happening, uh, of course, with the signing of the new Electricity Act. We must say a very big thank you to you. My guest has been Wisdom Chap, Jumbo, Public Affairs Analyst. Many thanks for your useful insight on the show for today. We do appreciate them. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And that's the size of the show for today. I will leave you with this feature on the future of the event and industry in Nigeria. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now. This one is nice. Okay, you look nice in this one. And so that was something that um, event managers were having to do. The event planning business is highly profitable and can be started with no or relatively low capital. It is, however, pertinent to note that it is a networking-oriented activity. With the progressive comeback from the pandemic, stakeholders have converged on Event Experience Africa to share and connect with other professionals to better position themselves to hear the ground running in 2023. Led by Nigeria's foremost event planner, Funke Bokana Obrute, participants were intensively involved in an informative and unusual experience. They were engaged on drivers for sustainable business growth, curated sessions, emerging innovations and trends in the industry. They need a change of mindset. And for me, reset is either moving backwards, turning around, moving forward, pausing and rethinking. You know, you can either do a hard reset where everything changes or you just do, you reset your mind, you reset your business, reset your life. Um, I would say melting pot, a melting point where everybody can come together to learn, to relearn, and then to just get education, to network. And I saw that there was really nothing for Africa. You know, I go for conferences internationally, um, all over the world. I've spoken, I've attended um, over the years, and I know that we can be very expensive. First of all, getting on the plane, um, buying your tickets, um, getting on the plane, getting the hotel, paying for the conference, and they're very, very expensive. But I just thought, how can we make it nearer for people? People who curate experiences across Africa are the event organizers, event planners, the vendors, and people in the value chain. See how powerful it is to actually put all of these people in one room. It's such an amazing thing. So uh, if I'm to describe it, Texas is unifying Africa and figuring out great ways to make this industry in Africa globally competitive. Right now, the world is actually, you know, the entire touchlights. Is on Africa right now. Like I said, a lot of times people don't see the they feel oh, it's just it's just a big ashoki, it's just a big color, it's just a big style. But truth be told, it's not true. What we do is basically curating a moment, a fashion moment for you. That's what your style is for us. So as much as it's pretty difficult to convince, sometimes your resume and what you've done and what and how you've been able to um, 
put your previous your previous brides or your previous groups together just sort of makes it easier but a lot of times it's convincing them Texa 2023 was also targeted at corporate stakeholders such as brand and corporate communication activation managers, including experiential marketing companies. Nice from your clients. 